Salutations, players. It's your boy, Baron Marius von Pfuffeldink. And today I'm going to be showing you the fluffy goings on on how to correctly identify a state trooper from the province of Hockland. Quiet doggy, I'm reading fluffy goings on. Now, Hockland is the smallest of the imperial provinces, a tiny realm nestled, nestling between the Middle Mountains and the River Talavec. The Drakwad Forest, dense and teeming with wildlife, covers everything except a few settlements and the small stretches of farmland that lie along the riverbanks. What I'm reading you is currently coming from the website Warhammer slash or Warhammer hyphen empire.com. I'll also show you now a, a map of the empire so that you can see where Hawklin lies. Let's see if we can get it in. Okay, it's meow. So back out just a little bit. Now this is from the Empire Uniforms and Heraldry. So Hawkland is right here, between Middenland and Oslin, right below the Middle Mountains and above Talibigland. So you can see there's nothing really here, except for Hergig, the capital city. Okay, so I will show you this map uh, and continue reading from Warhammer Empire. It should be no surprise to learn that Hawkland is a country of hunters and woodsmen. Timber and furs are the primary exports. Hawkland is also famous for its gunsmiths. While the foundries of Nulm churn out handguns and pistols of functional but unremarkable quality, the master gunmakers of Hawkland create unique and very expensive weaponry for the nobility. These range from highly decorative but otherwise ordinary firearms to hunting rifles, multi-barreled pistols, and even such curiosities as swords with built-in gun barrels. Oh, I seem to recall one of those on a recent War Boss Tay video with the Outriders and Pistoliers. The Hawkland Long Rifle is the best known example of this industry. These weapons were developed from long barreled hunting guns. It was discovered that the accuracy and range could be greatly increased by adding a spiraling groove to the inside of the barrel. This rifling is very difficult to create and makes the weapon slow to load. Even so, they are highly valued in war, especially with the addition of telescopic sighting apparatus created by the Engineers' School of Altdorf. Hawkland retains a small elite force of soldiers armed with a long rifle, and the weapon can be found in limited quantities throughout the Empire. Nevertheless, Hawkland, in many respects, still is still a superstitious and backwards place where the worship of Ta'al, Raya, and even the nature spirits of the old faith is still very strong. The destruction brought about by the recent incursion of the ruinous powers retconned has only increased this tendency, and there is now more nature worship in Hawkland than has been seen in the Empire for a thousand years. Many of Hawkland's towns were raided or sacked in the invasion, even the capital of Hergig. The province remains under martial law, and recovery seems a long way away. Well, that's just too bad now, isn't it? So, let's zoom in and get our little man back up here and begin the war boss tutorial. <clears throat> Alright, thank you, Marius. So, I'm going to be painting this guy up because it says that Hawkland is a very rural, backwards place, and also because it was recently sacked and you know raided and almost decimated by the storm of chaos retconned i chose the guy that has a little rip in his knee and also his his shoe is kind of worn worn in you can see the the toe popping out so um i'm going to be using mainly old colors like talar and flesh for step one but if you use the conversion chart on the games workshop website then you'll easily be able to get the updated equivalent, whatever it may be. So Talon Flesh, what we're going to be doing is covering all the skin areas. I'm going to set up my wet palette here, sorry about that. So I'm going to start with the little knee popping out. As well as the toe. I just think that's so hilarious. Poor guy. And hands.
Hope you're all doing well. By the time this comes out, the uh, unboxing of Handgunner's video should have uploaded. I've been filming that in segments over the last couple of days just because I've been... Oh, this has been a busy week. Holy moly. Uh, things are starting to calm down just a little bit, so I'll be able to film more of these again. Um, yeah, and see, I've got a lot of stuff I want to film, I want to cover. But isn't that how it always is, though? I've got, like, so much stuff that I want to film. Don't sulk, Igor. I'll, I'll paint you eventually, don't worry. I'm not talking to you. Igor. Be like that. <laughs> I feel so naked, monster. With my great primer. I love Talarn Flesh. Great color. <sighs> keep, keep thinking about how I have to and keep I keep being reminded, reminding myself, I guess, that I have to go out and Sooner or later, just blow a whole, you know, paycheck or two on on the new paint range. Not all at once, but I mean, it's the fact that it's going to be so expensive. Man, that really bums me out. Okay, so face, hands, and uh, if you've got them, feet. I think there's a state trooper out there too with feet. Uh, with his feet showing without shoes, which is pretty ridiculous. Now, uh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna next paint the green with Narlock Green. And why don't we go in quarters? Everybody loves quarters. I gotta put like tape or <coughs> or something to remind me where I have to keep my hands in order to be in focus. So using the Ghetto Wet palette, using um, using my techniques. It's my it's my hope. I mean, I say it in all my videos that I'm, I'm hoping that these videos will really help out new painters. And um, let me know if, you know, if there's something else you'd like to see. Especially if you're new to the hobby. Which is good, I mean, considering that the tomb, that the tomb kings, the Empire is like the latest army to drop for Warhammer Fantasy. It's uh, quite popular. It's always been quite popular, it's just, it's always been run a certain way before and now with all the new builds. It seems like there's a good variety of army lists out there I've seen. So, that's good, right? Uh, 
Shall we also give him a green feather? Yeah, let's give him a green feather. So Narlock green also for the feather. Yeah, I remember when I first saw the the green, um, green and red color scheme, and I thought to myself, "Oh no, it's a Christmas army." But I think I found a way that's going to make it look a little bit more dark and grim and uh, not as as bright with the reds. Never did care for the cartoony style, as you'll tell by my Vargeist video. Okay, moving on, let's uh, paint the other side with some Macrite Red. I had Mephiston Red, I don't know where it went. Igor. Yes, Master. You see my Mephi Mephiston Red? No, Master. I'm sorry, I haven't. That's weird. I'm pretty sure that's the new uh, red base coat. And that one works really well too. It's a little bit of this old uh, Mechrite red, but with with a touch more of that bright blood red thrown in. And it seems to, co I, from what I remember, it covers pretty nice, nicely. Oh, I see this this side of his tights don't go all the way down. So we'll give him some give him some stockings, I think. Yeah, I'm reading this uh, uniforms and heraldry book has some really interesting ideas for Empire generals. In this Hawkland section, there's a whole page dedicated to a, a, a patrol of the Drakwald Forest, which you can represent in-game by saying that, um, you know, these groups go out, small little forces go out and patrol the forest. This one particular one has like the parent unit and the two detachments, and um, there's a little bit of background and characters fluff for, for the, the sergeants, or the marksmen, the leaders of each detachment. It's very interesting. It's, I think it's cool that, you know, with human armies especially, you have a lot of room for that creative freedom to come up with. Like, why, why does your army fight the way that it does, and why is it organized in the way that it is? Saying that, you know, with the army, Empire Army special rules for detachments, you can really have some great character to your force. Okay, so when you're painting quarters like this, you just want to really be aware of where you draw that line down the center. When you're painting on your second color, like right now I'm painting on red, uh, make sure that you check all the angles and... <coughs> excuse me. That you check like up by the collar. <laughs> done by the bit the, the belt and this guy's like Santa's helper right now <coughs> sorry about that okay so let's get started on the accoutrements while that dries Henry Brown is going to be the color of 
his shoes. Nice and simple. When I paint colors onto the clothes, I like to think, okay, what kind of material is this, and um, why would it be this color? So for for the uniform, I'm thinking, you know, it's probably just some cheap fiber, uh, cheap material that they can dye in mass quantities. And with the shoes, I tend to give my more rustic and poor armies this Kemri brown shoes. If this was like a captain or a general of the empire, <clears throat> then I probably would have given him like black black shoes. Now for his top, I mean not for the top, but for his stockings, we're gonna give it some of this new citadel base ceramite white. Let's see how that goes. And again, like before, I'm gonna try testing it out straight from the bottle after having just wiped off just a little bit of the excess. I'm just gonna see whether or not this needs some thinning down like the old Citadel paints used to. It seems to be going on pretty smooth. So, all right. It's not as streaky as Skull White used to be. It tends to go on pretty nicely. For me, anyway, this bottle that I have. This pot, I mean. So, very good, Saramite White. <clears throat> and very good on you, Citadel. Okay, let's get, let's get cracking. Calton Brown, or whatever its current equivalent is, for the pouches. any belts, etc. And for his hat. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did buy. Some of the new Rackarth flesh. Let's see. See if it's all it's cracked up to be, you know what I mean? I hear it's the new Den of Stone. We'll just see about that. Got high standards. Rackarth flesh. So we're going to be painting the uh, little belt here at the front. Oh, he really does look like a Christmas elf at this point. Oh, forgot his hat. I think it's really just the colors. No, it feels like instead of green, it feels red and blue, like Altdorf. Instead of the red, it feels red and uh, green and yellow, like Sterland. Be totally different, but just the fact that we all associate red and green with Christmas, he just looks like a, like a little elf to me. And I think it's worse that's in quarters. Maybe if he had like red trousers and a green top, it might not be as bad. I don't know. Okay, and um, we're also going to be painting his hair. Captain Brown.
If your guy doesn't have a hat or hair, then just skip this part. Okay, let's see. Let's check out this new Rackard flesh. This next step. It looks way too brown. Looks like a commando khaki rather than a substitute for Den of Stone. Yeah, it goes on easy though. Know? It's getting kind of watery at the end. This is my brush though. My brush was really watery. Okay, so just got that off. Yeah, there's no way that this can pass for the bone the way that uh, Deneb Stone did. Back right flesh. I'm gonna give you a meh rating for as a paint, but as a substitute for Deneb Stone, I think you fail. You fail, sir. Uh, you know what we can use you for? Is across the front. And let's bring back the neb stone to paint the body of the crossbow. Camry Brown. Did I say Camry Brown? I didn't say Den of Stone, did I? Camry Brown. Got Den of Stone on the mind. Hey, I was wrong. I just checked the GW website. It's Chaos Black instead of a lighter, um, that bone color for the wire. I don't know what I was thinking. For some reason, I just thought Chaos Black. Anyways, we're jumping on to the metal parts now. So, chain mail. This we're gonna paint. Let's see if we're gonna, gonna focus this little nub back here. Now I have never owned a crossbow, which is why I'm kind of just shots in the dark here, people. Just guessing off the top of my head that this is this would be silver. If I think this is right, though. Yeah, so I remember reading that entry in the Warhammer Empire website about them making the guns with the sword blades attached. Thinking... Squall Leonhart! Final Fantasy VIII! Look at this mood! This is the part that people always forget the tops. Tops are like the worst part to forget because that's what the viewer sees when they pick up your model. The first thing they see. <laughs> um, we're also going to be painting any silver. Like down here, I can see the belt. This guy's uh, strap. <coughs> but for any other silver, you'd use chainmail. And. To realize while I'm looking at my guy, he's got no stock of his gun in his painting. Okay, so this is the point where we're going to do the washes, and I'm also going to make this a little mini review of the new washes. Oh, I missed one thing. Um, the 
this little skull pin in this guy's hat. And a painted silver. So otherwise it would be weird for him to have a... Quiet you! For him to have a, a pin made out of a baby's skull. This is kind of weird. Okay, so we're going to be reviewing now and using, applying, two washes. Karaberg Crimson, which is the red wash. Karaberg, the great swords, the red and white great swords, and Crimson, of course, red. And BL10 Green, which seems to be the new uh, Thraka Green. So we're also going to be comparing them with the old washes, Thraka Green and Baal Red. <coughs> So first let's start with the old washes on the trousers. So all red, um, down here, oh let's get it up to camera so you can see how it spreads over. open Carober Crimson and you can see these tamper proof lids there you go so already I can tell that the color is a lot darker and it shades really well Whereas the, the all red just kind of didn't really work as well. So it immediately went into the recesses and gave it a nice dark red ruddy tone. So these were the two that I bought today because I knew I'd be painting up Hawkland next. So I wanted to do a little color comparison. And uh, yeah, kind of like it. So I'm just going to add it to the ball red at the bottom to get a nice consistency. And yeah, look at that. That's that's not that bad. It is not that bad. All right, this new Carabird Crimson is okay. Works for me. Now let's uh let's see what the what the green is like. <clears throat> First, good old Thraka green. Now the green you're going to be able to see a lot better because against the Narlock green base coat, uh, Thraka green is really going to be showing up as you can see right there. Let's color the front now. I try to remember to keep my model in in shot. A little bit more. Okay, so that's a it's a nice nice looking green. So now let's try the BL tan on the sleeve. Again, tamper proof seal. Oh, look at that. I uh, just lifted off the whole cap. Nice. Nice GW. Okay. So there you can see the bottom and now the top. Not really too much of a difference that I can see. Spreads goes on just as well as Thraka Green. Um, I don't know. The colors for this seem pretty similar to my to my eye. Yeah, especially when looking from the back here. So I don't know about this one. 
definitely, you know what, if you've got the old paints, there's no reason to throw them out. There's, like, you know, don't say, oh yeah, they, they, they switched over their paint line, so all these old paints are obsolete. You can just use the conversion site on gamesworkshop.com and just keep using them. Slowly integrate new paints as you, as you build in paint, but I think if anything, there's a little bit more pigment, pigment in these new shades, so they show up really well on the old foundation colors, but I mean, if you're using the new layers anyway, you can't really think you'd see much difference. Let's finish with the feather. So my opinion on the new shades, so far I've only tested out uh, three of them. This green, red, and the yellow for the Averlin. And, you know, they're acceptable. I'm not going to say they're any worse. Uh, the real challenge doesn't lie in the shades though, or the washes. It really lies in the, the base coats and the layers, especially the base coats, the base paints. I mean, which is supposed to take the place of the very awesome foundation paints. And for me, Rackarth Flesh just does not come close to your friend and mine, the Nebstone. <coughs> it just doesn't. <sighs> Sadly. So, you can use Ogren Flesh or Raiklin Flesh Shade or whatever the new flesh wash is called. Paint the exposed skin bits. And even though I'm doing a crossbow, man, this is, you know, this this tutorial can go for any Auckland, um, Auckland trooper. And then we're going to be using some Dublin mud for all the browns. Can't go wrong with Dublin mud. Some painting shoes. Um, all leather. And I'm gonna paint the crossbow. And the hat. Really gonna give it that aged leather feel. <coughs> So don't forget the hair. Get that Dublin mud all over the crossbow there. Or I'm sorry, whatever. I don't know what the new Dublin mud is. Ah! I need to get like a conversion sheet handy, especially if I'm not gonna be buying all the new paints just yet. Igor. Yes, monster. Bad at black. Is going to go on the parchment as well as the stocking. Okay, at this point our model should look something like this, and um, what I did was I took some of the texture paint, Astro Granite, and even though I'd already had sand 
and glued uh, or glued on the sand to the base I um, put it over kind of to see how it would fill and um, I think it looks nice it uh, it went over nicely and it looks like the the gravel is or the ballast is really sealed nicely on and won't flake or chip off especially when it hardens so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break and um, I'm going to make this one part part one of my Hawkland video and we'll come back in part two to do up the highlights and um, any last finishing details so I uh, hope to see you then thanks 